Welcome back to another episode of Funalysis. My name is Scott. I'm a scouting and strategy mentor for Team 1987 The Bronco Bots from Lee Summit North High School in Lee Summit, Missouri. On this episode of Funalysis, we're going to be taking a look at the evolution of the autonomous routines from this year's 2025 Game Briefscape. In this video, we're going to feature auto routines from some of your favorite teams from week one all the way through the recently completed week five, heading into the week six regionals and district championship events. We're going to be looking at not only how many Coral teams are scoring and where those Coral are coming from, but also a bit of a preview about where I think the auto meta game is going for this year's game. Let's take a look. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options through their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Starting off in week one, we're at the Winemi Port Regional. We're going to focus on the Red Alliance where we have team 4414 High Tide and 3255 the Super Nerds. Both 3255 and 4414 are going to score their priest loaded coral, but they're going to choose two different places about where to go to try to get their next game piece. 4414 is going to focus on trying on getting one of those pre-stage coral game pieces from the ground, while 3255 elects to go for the human player station. Now both robots do manage to secure another game piece, and 4414 manages to score theirs, and 3255 manages to attempt to score theirs with about 3 seconds left on the clock. Now, well, it's not necessarily important whether or not they score or not, but I think the most important thing to look at from this week is how teams are thinking about tackling this year's Autonomous Challenge by both attacking the pre-stage Coral game pieces and the Human Player Loading Station. As we move on, we're going to go to Week 2. We're at the Plano, Texas District Event, where on the Red Alliance we have Team 3310 Blackhawk and 148 the Robo Wranglers, up against 5411 the Robo Talons and 9105 the Techno Talons. And as we see, the Red Alliance, both 3310 and 148, managed to score their preloaded game piece, and but instead of either one of them trying to head to those pre-stage pre game pieces, both robots are going to head to the human player loading station. Same thing with the Blue Alliance, after both scoring their preloaded game piece, both are also going to go for the human player loading station. Now, as we take a look at this routine, I think one of the important things to note on the clock is when they both teams try to score their second game piece, with about two seconds left on the clock is when the Red Alliance manages to try and score those second game pieces. So while two game pieces is pretty good for the second week of this event, the time in which it takes them to do is going to be important as we look towards the future and some of the auto routines we're going to see coming in later weeks. Notably, the Blue Alliance, while a little slower, did actually manage to score all four of their game pieces as opposed to the Red Alliance, who was moving a little faster and only managed to score three. So we can see that to a certain extent, there is some trade-off between speed and accuracy. Where the Red Alliance tried to move a little bit faster and missed one, the Blue Alliance, being a little more deliberate, managed to score all four. But we're going to see how that develops as we go and move on to week three, where we're going to take a look at the Blue Alliance, where we have Team 27 Rush and 1706 the Ratchet Rockers. Like previously, both of them are going to score their first preloaded Coral game pieces on L4 and head towards the Human Player Loading Station. The difference here is going to be 1706 and 27 both managed to score their second game piece with about 6 seconds left on the clock, whereas compo uh, compared to the previous week, 3310 and 148 were scoring those game pieces with about 2 to 3 seconds left on the clock. So we can see the Blue Alliance, with a little bit greater accuracy and moving much faster, is not only going to get 2, but both 1706 and 27 are actually going to be able to score 3 game pieces. So and we can see that on the Red Alliance, you also see 9401 minus Mayhem also go Going to and from the human player station also able to get three. So in just one week, we have robots that have sped up their cycle times by about two seconds, allowing them to score an additional game piece. And we're going to see this progression continue when we look towards week four at one of our later events. Before we get there, though, we're, we are into week four, but we're going to be at the PNW District Auburn event. 
Now, in this event, we saw, uh, previously we saw in week one, 44-14 was attempting to pick up the game pieces from those pre-stage coral pieces on the ground, but we didn't really see much of that in week two and week three. As we're getting to week four, though, we will see 29-10 try and tackle that alongside their partner, 36-63 CPR Cedar Park Robotics. Well, 36-63 is going to focus on the Hubo Player Loading Station 2910 is going to score not just one, not just two, but they're going to manage to go after all three of those pre-stage coral game pieces on the ground and be one of the first robots in FRC this year to actually score all three of those pre-stage coral game pieces along with the preloaded game piece that they have. Now, as many people speculated at the beginning of the year, that audit routine of scoring all three of those pre-stage cold game pieces was going to be one of the most tricky challenges when it came to auto routines in this year's game. So seeing a team tackle that in week four, I think really speaks to how high the ceiling is going to be for auto routines in this year's game. Now moving on, we're going to take a look at another event here in week four. We're at the New England District WPI event, and we're actually going to take a look at the outer routines of both of these alliances. To start off with, we're going to look at the Red Alliance, Team 190, Gompy and the Herd, and 1768, Shobo Robotics. Now, as we start here, one of the first things to look at, again, like all the others, right, 190 and 1716 are both going to get their preloaded coral onto the L4s, and they're going to get back, and they're going to get a second game piece from the human player loading station. The notable difference here as compared to week three is that they've managed to score their second game pieces with about eight seconds left on the clock, as compared to week three, where you saw 1706 and 27 scoring those second game pieces with six seconds left on the clock. And while two seconds doesn't seem like a lot, as we saw from the difference between week two to week three, we're going to see a similar elevation here from week three to week four. So as we go back here with about seven seconds left on the clock, we're going to see that both 1768 and 190 both actually miss loading a third game piece into their robot. And so when they come back here with about five seconds left on the clock where they'd be attempting to score their third game pieces, they're actually both going to miss. But where that two seconds comes in handy is both alliance, both robots on the Red Alliance are going to race back to the human player loading station, get a fourth piece in an autonomous period, and manage to score those with about one second left on the clock. So again, while we talked about the difference between week two and three, the difference between three and four is in a whole other game piece, showing how robots are managing to get faster and faster as we go through the autonomous period in this, week's, in this year's game. Now going back again, we're going to take a look at that blue alliance where we have 125, the Neutrons, and 88, TJ Squared. So we see both the Neutrons and TJ Squared getting their preloaded coral, just like all the others. But what we're going to see is we're going to see Neutrons moving just a little bit faster, as while TJ Squared is just now getting back to the human player loading station to get their second game piece, the Neutrons are already back at the reef for that second game piece. In fact, they're about a second faster than the Red Alliance right now, in terms of how fast they're moving. So while TJ Squared is at the reef with their second game piece, the Neutrons are already back on the way back with the third, scoring it just after TJ Squared, whereas TJ Squared is just now coming back to the reef now with about three seconds left with the third game piece. The Neutrons are about halfway back and manage to score a fourth game piece with about one second left on the clock. So the Neutrons actually were able to move just as fast as the Red Alliance and manage to get an additional game piece by moving just a little bit faster. So we're already seeing how teams at this point in time are trying to use speed in order to make up the difference and score additional game pieces. But we're going to see later that in later weeks, teams are going to try something different in order to try to get those additional game pieces and go beyond the four that we're seeing here during week four. And getting right into it, we're here in week five. We're going to take a look at the Contra Costa regional event out in California. And we're going to take a look at the Red Alliance of 1678 Citrus Circuits paired up with 1323 Madtown. Previously, where we had seen both of those alliances going for the human player loading station, both 1323 and 1678 are going to choose to get their coral directly from the ground rather than the human player station. 1678 is going to head towards the human player station but still get that coral from the ground, whereas 1323, like Jack and the Bot, is going to try to tackle those pre-stage coral game pieces on the ground. Now both 1678 and 1323 are going to find their groove and manage to score four coral here at Autonomous. But one of the things I want to focus at here in week five is sort of where the potential for this year's auto metagame is to potentially develop. And really, we can see that by looking at the third alliance partner here on the right alliance, Team 649 M Set Fish. Like we said, both 1323 and 1678 are pretty efficient about getting those coral pieces off the ground. But in the manner in which they're doing it, specifically with 1678 on the far human player station and 1323 focusing on those pre-stage game pieces, 
they've left this near side driver station and human player station open for a potential third robot to be working from that human player station as well, potentially getting it even more additional pieces to be able to score in the autonomous period. And for me, I think that's one of the key places where this auto metagame has potential to develop and where I'm hoping to see, you know, teams at these district championship events and champs, you know, really take advantage. But there's one more event we want to look at here, and that's going to be the Israeli District Championship. We're in Finals 2, where we have 1690 Orbit, once again paired with the 5990 Trigon. Now, similar to 1678 and 1323, both Orbit and Trigon are going to focus on collecting coral from the ground. Now, one of the things that this allows them to do, like 1670 and 1323, is they're going to move just a little bit faster than those teams who are having to go all the way to the human player station and saving them just about a few seconds overall of driving time. Now, 1690 is going to have their second piece up with about 9 seconds, their third piece with about 7 seconds, but 1690 is going to have their fourth piece scored with about 3 seconds left. So again, this is week five where they're scoring about three seconds left. We again see about that two second progression over the previous week, week four, where you had 190 and 125 scoring their first, fourth game piece with about one second left. 1690 is actually scoring with about three seconds left. And what that allows them to do, just like in previous weeks, is use those two seconds to their full advantage by scoring not just four, but actually getting five corals scored at autonomous. And with a little help from 5990, scoring three pieces of their own and another one from their third alliance partner, the Red Alliance has managed to actually put up over nine game pieces in autonomous up on the L fours and so you know with a alliance partner you know a third alliance partner being maybe slightly more efficient or being able to get additional game pieces i think it's entirely possible that we could see 10 maybe 11 and who knows maybe even all 12 l4 coral scored during the autonomous period but let me know what you think down in the comments below is there a particular auto routine that you think we missed that you know is worthy of note or is there any other ideas that you have about how this auto meta game is going to develop Make sure to like and subscribe, and for fun analysis, my name is Scott. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.